Hey guys, sculpture artist Sue Seeger here. Some of you have been contacting me wondering where I've been. You haven't been seeing me at the art shows. I haven't been posting on my blog and I've been getting asked, are you still doing artwork? Are you working? Is everything okay? What's happening? And yes, everything is terrific and I am definitely still working. In fact, that's what's been ironically keeping me out of the art shows. Um, I've been so busy working on commissions and just projects to keep bringing the galleries new work that um, I actually haven't had time to amass the amount of artwork needed to do a show, like the 50 on 50th show, say. Um, actually, right now, I'm, I'm booked out through an entire year from right now. <laughs> Boom. I know, crazy. But... Um, I wanted to have a way to still have a connection with people and I miss seeing all the cool artists that I used to rub elbows with at the art shows and even some of my regular art clients and just the people who would stop by and say hi and, and check out what my latest work was. And I thought if I started doing some videos it would be a way I could kind of share what I'm working on and uh, maybe even satisfy a little bit of curiosity about how exactly it works with the whole artistic process and the welding and all that. Um, quite often people ask me if they can come and watch me work and um, <laughs> I hate to say it but that that would just not work. Um, they, I would be way too self-conscious I think with somebody standing there actually observing me and it's just really not that safe either my shop is not very big and you'd need like safety glasses and you know it just wouldn't be practical but through video I can actually let you guys watch me work and the camera wouldn't weird my introverted self out as much as like a crowd of people standing there watching me so I thought it might be a fun experiment to try and if you guys like it, if it works, um, I'll keep it going. People always want to know, how did I get started doing art professionally? And how did I get started doing welding art in particular? And I got to tell you, when I think back on it now, it even kind of freaks me out that this even ever happened. I would have never dreamed in a million years I would be doing what I'm doing now. Um, when I was little, yes, I was one of those little kids whose favorite gift to receive in the entire world was like a fresh pack of magic markers and a stack of office paper from my dad's office that I could just go nuts and make whatever I wanted. Um, I wasn't even as interested in coloring books as I was in that because with a blank sheet of paper, my imagination could just go wild and I could do whatever I wanted to. Um, my wild imagination usually came up with some kind of a horse-related theme in those early days, but, you know, hey, I was a little girl. Um, so I've always done art, and I've always loved it. And um, I was encouraged by my family. They always um, appreciated my little drawings I would do and stick them on the fridge, and my grandparents would always want me to bring them a picture when I visited and all that, but... But I guess artwork was um, treated as like a fun hobby. So the older I got, um, my interest in artwork did not wane, but um, it was very much a case of like, that's, that's nice, but you need to start thinking about what you want to do when you grow up. <laughs> and... Um, you know, it's really understandable that that was the thinking. I mean, if anybody is looking for a big uh, money-making career, I would definitely not recommend that they become an artist. Being an artist is something you definitely don't get into for the money, let's just say. So, you know, I drifted into the business world, and I was moderately successful at that for a number of years, and got into management, and I always was drawn towards the creative side, so I wound up getting more into advertising and merchandising and more visual um, aspects of the business world, but um, 
ultimately I kind of woke up in my mid thirties and um, it just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> I, I just wasn't happy. Um, I heard a saying, don't get so busy climbing the ladder that you forget to look around and see what wall it's leaning against and kind of realized that was me. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd kind of been climbing the ladder, climbing the ladder, and that was relatively gratifying for a while. But ultimately, when I got up to a certain level and looked around, I was like, I don't even want to get up to the top of this wall. I could care less about this. So basically, I just jumped off the ladder into open space, and uh, I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Okay, I, I still felt like I wanted to be creative, but um, I was still very much in the mindset that I needed to have like a real job. And I'd been working in the furniture industry, so I thought, well, furniture designer, that'd be cool, you know. I appreciated good design and um, felt like I could, you know, give that a try. Um, I'd noticed a lot more metal furniture coming on the market, accent tables, chairs, things like that. And I, I've always just kind of had an attitude that um, just because I don't know how to do something does not make it impossible. I mean, if one person can learn it, I can certainly learn it. So the fact that I knew nothing about welding for some reason just didn't dissuade me at all from thinking, oh, I'll design metal furniture. I know. So I set about on my master plan, uh, which did take, you know, about a year to put into effect. Um, I would save up and buy a tool, save up more, buy a welder, and I just kept amassing tools and equipment till I had enough to start my shop and then I quit my job entirely <laughs> without a net and um, decided I was going to spend the whole winter learning how to weld and begin working on some designs I'd sketched up. And, it, you know, as usual, I greatly underestimated the um, amount of time and effort involved in this and thought, oh, surely in a few months I'd be just fully operational. Well, the universe had different plans. Shortly into my little experiment in metal furniture design, my entire shop burned to the ground. Um, it, it wasn't me, I swear. The chimney caught fire and the whole thing burned to the ground. Uh, the only thing I was able to save was my welder which I dragged out into the snow <laughs> and uh, watched the whole building go up in flames and eventually cave in. And the only thing that survived the fire was actually the first thing I ever made with that welder, which was my workbench, which I still have. And apparently it's indestructible. So there I was, stuck in the middle of the countryside uh, with no shop, a 30 by 50 patch of scorched earth, no job, and um, a welder. So I did the only sensible thing. I went to welding school. That turned out to be the life-changing move right there. Um, when it came right down to it, there was a lot more to this whole welding stuff than just buying all of the tools and equipment. Uh, once I got out there and really started trying to make some of these cool designs I had come up with, um, I was actually kind of intimidated by my own tools. I mean, I'd used simple tools before, but not like a grinder and a welder and cutting torch and all this other stuff. So, you know, there were sparks flying all over. It was loud. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was a little overwhelming. So... In school, I really learned the safe way to use all the equipment and actually found I was quite good at welding. I got straight A's for the first time in my entire life. And it was really fun. 
once I got over that initial fear of all the sparks and all the noise and all that, um, it was really odd. It was like it focused my concentration so much that it was like this little inner pool of calm that I could just go into. I could I'd think about nothing but the weld I was doing and it was somehow relaxing. During the course of my schoolwork, um, I rebuilt my shop and one day I was practicing some cutting for class in my shop, my rebuilt shop. And I was just cutting strips of metal and letting them fall to the floor. And every once in a while I'd scoop them up and throw them in the scrap bin. And one of the times I did that, I scooped up the scrap pieces of steel, picked them up and was just about to drop them in the bin. And I looked at them and they had fanned out in what looked to me like the shape of a wing. And it just made me kind of freeze for a second. And I immediately just carefully moved it back over to my bench and I started welding and tacking the pieces together in layers and kind of trying to add on to the shape I initially saw. And I wound up almost by accident making the first sculpture I'd ever made in my entire life. This one right here, actually. And <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> it was like the switch got flipped. I mean, just in that moment of finishing that sculpture, I worked very fast so that I wouldn't lose any of the magic. It, it felt like I needed to quick capture this. And if I hesitated for a moment, there was a possibility I'd lose it. Like somehow the coolness of what I was seeing would evaporate. And it, it just completely changed everything. It was just a really strange feeling of a pivotal moment is happening right now. And I knew from that moment on that um, what I really needed to be doing was art, was sculpture. It was so bizarre. I'd never even given a thought to sculpture in my entire life. And all of a sudden, here I was um, feeling this incredible feeling of freedom and satisfaction and excitement kind of all bundled into one and it changed the trajectory of my entire life at that point. I wound up talking to my husband that night and um, being the ever supportive good sport that he is, um, his reaction when I told him that, guess what honey, I think I want to start doing art instead of furniture and oh, by the way, I have no idea about the art world or how any of that works. I really don't know anything about sculpture. Um, so I'm going to kind of need to self-educate, which means probably no income of any kind from this for at least a year, possibly ever. I mean, <laughs> what if I do this and I completely suck? I have no way of knowing. I just knew that I had this giant drive inside of me to do this and I, I needed to go for it. I mean, I have a saying, it's your life, don't chicken out, okay? I mean, there are leaps of faith you just have to take. I'd rather have a life of oh wells than a life of what ifs and this was just a gamble I needed to make and play it out and see what happened. Much to his credit, he said, well, <laughs> if that's what it's going to take to make you happy and satisfied, if this is really it for you, then um, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll get by. We'll find a way to make it work. So it was really a leap of faith for him, too. I mean, he had no idea 
how it would turn out, and neither did I. But from that day forward, I began making art and paying attention to art. Um, I became consumed with ingesting visually as much of it as I could and learning about it on my own. I never went to art school. I went to welding school. And to this day, I guess I'd have to admit, I really don't know that much about art in the classical art school sense, okay? I just know what I like and what I respond to. And um, it took me a while to figure it out, but ultimately um, I learned to just have the confidence to go with my gut and create things that were pleasing to my eye. Fortunately for me, um, I got very good responses to my work and that encouraged me to keep developing my look, I guess, and just keep experimenting. Um, I'm always trying different things and, and seeing what different effects I can get with the steel and different things catch my interest at different times and I'm always going down different little alleyways with it. And it's been a super interesting career path for me. I, I can't even explain to you how much I enjoy. It's, it's beyond a career. It's, it is my life. Okay. Okay, so that's the story of how I got started doing artwork. And a lot of you guys are wondering, well, what am I working on right now? Recently, I got hired to do the biggest commission of my career so far. It's a huge outdoor installation that's actually right in my hometown. So that's going to be a really fun project for me to work on. It's going to take me all summer. So um, I'll be doing videos kind of keeping you guys updated on my progress and you'll get to see me actually welding and making the art in my shop. If you do enjoy the videos, if you um, like, click like on a video or comment or subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my blog, all of that stuff um, helps my videos rankings in YouTube which makes it easier for other people to find the videos so if you like something go ahead and click like whatever and I'd always love to hear any comments you guys have on any of it I mean that's what this whole thing is about getting more of a conversation going I'm a bit of an introvert so really this whole internet format is perfect for me because I'm an introvert that loves people Okay, so I definitely want to hear from you guys and want to have a discussion about all the stuff I'm working on and get feedback from you guys. I promise I'm not going to inundate you with a bunch of emails constantly. Uh, you know, it'll be up to you how much you want to check in or not. I've got a few other big projects in the works too that'll be coming out later this summer. And some of them I, I might even need a little feedback from you guys on, a little support or encouragement. So I hope I'll see you guys um, hanging out in Sulandia with me. See you around the shop. Welcome <laughs> to the world's most boring video. I'm a bit of an introvert so when you do see me at a big art show I probably have a look on my face sort of like this. <laughs> Good lord. What the hell with this piece of hair? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Super interesting. I wonder if people who don't have cotton candy hair have this problem of it attacking your face sometimes. <laughs> oh god. Now I have something in my eye. Maybe this is why people dust. <laughs> I've always wondered. <laughs>